Hi everyone, William Garcia, Partner Solutions Architect at Amazon Web Services. Today I'm with Manu from Red Hat to talk about cost with Red Hat OpenShift service on AWS or Rosa. Hey Manu, how are you today? I'm doing good, Will. Thanks for having me. Hello everyone, my name is Manu Joy. I'm part of the Cloud Services Black Belt team at Red Hat. Right, so today we wanted to cover some of the key benefits uh, of Rosa when you get started with it and also cost optimization techniques to help you save cost further when you're trying to you know, improve efficiency on how you're running your applications. So Manu, can you help us understand where customers can get started here? Sure, Will. So typically when a customer is looking at Rosa for the first time, the easiest way for them to get started is to go with what we call a pay-as-you-go pricing model. So okay. this is essentially your um, on-demand model where you pay per hour for the resources that you consume. So you don't have to think too much about how I optimize costs when you deploy it initially. But once you run your workloads for a certain period of time, when you, once you move more workloads to the platform, you can look at how to optimize this for the long term so that you get a good TCO optimization. Now, how do we do that? We can convert some of these instances which you are constantly using for a long duration into reserved instances or make use of the savings plan feature of AWS. Now, by doing this, you commit to a longer term usage, but you get a good amount of discounting for that. And of course, we would see that customers probably use a mix of both because they do have a good baseline of workloads that are constantly running. And at the same time, to serve additional traffic, sometimes they need to spin up additional resources, which can be on the pay-as-you-go model. Fantastic. So this is for one year or three year commitment to reserve instances and saving plans. Those are billing constructs, so they are going to apply to you know existing worker nodes. You don't need to redeploy. You get the discount when you do the transition. Another topic I wanted to cover as well is for customers benefiting from the enterprise discount program, which is an AWS program where you commit to a certain amount of usage and Rosa uh, usage counts towards towards the CDP. So that's one of the programs available. There's also a couple of other uh, useful activities you can conduct when you're starting with Rosa. Uh, I'm thinking about proof of concepts, for example, here. So at this point, obviously, uh, there is funding available to help you experiment with, uh, with Rosa, but also you can get support from the Red Hat and AWS teams. Are on Absolutely. The so there are technical support in terms of, let's say, how do you architect, how do you deploy, how do you integrate that with other services within AWS. So those are things that um, Red Hat and AWS teams can help you with during that uh, POC stage. So do reach out to us for that support. Definitely. So think about it for you know the design phase, but also any you know hands-on workshops you want to have to get started. Then there's always like new Red Hat and AWS programs are coming around. I think, you know, stay in touch again with your sales teams from both ends so you can understand how you can, for example, migrate an OpenShift on-premises onto Rosa um, and understand some of the migration and modernization programs uh, available. So this is an area where we can help you with certain tools to help you do the migration. We can also help you in understanding the difference in architecture from the platform that you're coming from. And you know, there are services also available through Red Hat, through AWS, and through partners to help you be successful in that migration. Right. At this point, I think, Manu, uh, probably uh, we can start covering what's available in terms of optimizing the workloads as such. All right. So one of those things we can do is, initially, when you deploy your workloads, you choose a particular EC2 instance type, you create a machine pool within Rosa and you start deploying your workload. But eventually, once you deploy more workloads, you will notice that you have different types of workloads, some of them being more CPU intensive, some of them being more memory intensive. And so what we can do is we can take a look at the observ observability data or the monitoring data that comes from the clusters and we can determine which application suits which pattern. And we can create multiple machine pools within Rosa, and each machine pool can have one type of EC2 instance. So by doing this right sizing, you can optimize on the utilization of your nodes and as well as save on the overall cost saving. 
Right, so this is leveraging the monitoring stack out of the box present in Rosa to help you uh, gather some of this insight. Now, technically speaking, the way you manage your worker nodes is going to be through machine pools. These machine pools are going to help you, for example, to auto scale your worker nodes. Yeah. So it's a configuration you uh, enable at the machine pool level. And then other techniques are also available, right? For example, uh, horizontal pod auto scaling. So you make um, use of horizontal pod auto scaling to scale your deployments as well as the cluster auto scaling to scale the number of nodes in your cluster. So together, you can also customize parameters based on which this auto scaling happens. And this will ensure that your workload always has the right amount of nodes or resources to cater to its traffic requirement. So you can scale up as well as scale down the resources so that your um, cost is also optimized while you're able to serve the right amount of traffic. Fantastic. There's even a couple of other operators that can help you like OpenShift, Serverless, and uh, the cluster metrics auto scaler. We will share the link in the description. Then I think now that we are talking about machine pools, you can also bring in spot instances at this level. Spot instances are going to be really helpful for interruptible workloads or for example to save cost even further for your development and test environments. Manu, this is great. Now there's also exciting announcements uh, around the, the future of Rosa. Can we talk about Rosa with hosted control planes? So hosted control planes is a new architecture for Rosa, which is expected to be launched soon. So with hosted control planes, what we are doing essentially is to take the control plane, which is currently deployed inside the Rosa VPC, into the backend. So this results in a few interesting changes. So one of them being that the, the cluster cost, the overall cost of the cluster goes down. The second interesting change is a multi-architecture support, which will be enabled. So which means that you can run your x86 EC2 instance types in a machine pool, and you can also have a machine pool running your ARM or Graviton instances. So by moving to ARM, certain types of workloads which are suitable or feasible for the ARM architecture, you can actually save cost on the instance type. Great. So those are upcoming capabilities. There will also be a uh, post-GA uh, support for scale to zero to take your worker nodes down to zero, meaning that uh, if you don't need to run anything, you can essentially pause hibernate your cluster. So other than this, I think we, we basically covered some of the options or methods you can use to optimize the cost of your cluster. But an important part of looking at the overall cost and optimizing is cost observability. So Will, can you take us through some of those mechanisms we have to monitor and manage costs? Definitely. So to know what you need to optimize and to track how you're trending, you need to have tools to do that. And the first one I recommend is using the Red Hat Cost Management Service. So the Red Hat Cost Management Service is integrated into your Rosa console, and it comes with essentially a, a cost breakdown per project, per cluster, meaning per application, you can see how much you're consuming. If you also configure it to connect to your AWS cost usage reports, you can actually correlate, correlate that back to between you know, the cost of your application running on Rosa and uh, the resource usage of AWS infrastructure resources. So I will strongly encourage you to go and set it up. It's a five to 10 minutes uh, process, and then you'll be able to uh, really start uh, having this unified view of how you, where you can improve and projected cost as well. Then obviously you can continue to you know, leverage an AWS tagging strategy, for example, so whenever you provision a cluster, Rosa tags uh, all the components behind the scenes. So whether it's you know networking components, storage, compute components, they get default tags. Now, you can also bring in your AWS custom tags into uh, the picture at provisioning time, which means that you know you can have a cost breakdown per project, business unit, owners, etc. So really uh, simple to to have that uh, in place. I think perhaps now, you know, to conclude on uh, 
other options available? We can talk about the operator hub. Absolutely. So the operator hub allows you to, you know, look at some partner solutions which are provided by Red Hat partners. Some of them are certified and validated by the partners. Um, so that's a, a good way to make use of our partner ecosystem. So you will find observability tools, you will find right sizing tools, you will find monitoring tools. You will also find tools like Coopcos or Turbonomics, which can help you with this COPS observability as well as to make the right recommendations for how you can optimize it. Fantastic. Look, I think this is a great overview of where you can go from, you know, your starting point, but also for more advanced users who are looking for, you know, technical optimizations and, and new uh, different options to, to, to cost optimize. I want to thank you for, you know, your explanations today, Manu. I think we'll share a few links for you to follow along. And thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for having me, Will. Thanks. Thank you.